Um, yeah, hello everybody and welcome to the Unlocking the Secret Weapon of Leadership Workshop uh, hosted by ourselves, HR Connect Global Recruiting. Some of you may know us as Launch Global. Um, my name is Ross O'Loughlin, um, based in Ireland and recently joined the leadership team here in HR Connect. Uh, just brief introduction, look, we're, we're doing this workshop as uh, part of our efforts to build a community, um, I suppose within which leaders can collaborate network and advise each other on the different challenges they face both presently and in the future. Um, with this free community, uh, it is a free community to enter for a variety of reasons, uh, not least of which is because it's funded by the global recruitment arm of HR Connect. Uh, so if you have any recruitment needs, please do feel free to reach out, uh, not only to fill your vacancies by a trusted source, but to help us to continue to invest back into the community and deliver a further value for our members. It's one of our core beliefs is to kind of give back as much as is possible. So um, if you do enjoy this session um, or the community or even have suggestions for future topics, please do reach out to us and, and let us know. Uh, so before we kick off, look, I'll just do a few quick housekeeping items. Um, in your welcome email, uh, we've included HR and leaders bios to facilitate any connections. Uh, we've shared LinkedIn links for easy networking. Um, and additionally, we have a WhatsApp community. Um, if you want to join, simply provide your details in the chat um, and then Emma will look after sending out an invitation. Um, and this is, again, it's a peer to peer community where you can receive extensive support from other members. Um, second item, this will be an extremely interactive workshop. So as much as is possible, given the nature of, of today's uh, remote working environment, we'd really appreciate it if cameras and microphones could remain on. Um, we'll, the duration is approximately uh, an hour long, so we appreciate your time and we'll absolutely endeavor to stick to this as much as is possible without disrupting the flow of the conversation too much. Um, lastly, our aim is that you leave this workshop with three core takeaways. First is how your emotions impact your decisions and interactions. How emotional intelligence is the difference between uh, being a good versus a great leader and a real awareness of how to develop the 10 competencies of emotional intelligence. Uh, running the workshop is Sarah Golly. Sarah has 25 years experience in the telecoms and tech industry, where she oversaw large departments of about 500 people. And after a number of years as VP of Global Connectivity in Liberty Global, she decided the time is right to set up her own business to help leaders in a similar position increase not only their efficacy within the business, but that of their team's efficacy as well through emotional intelligence coaching. And what they learned from Sarah really has had a positive ripple effect on the people around them. So without further ado, uh, Sarah, over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ross. Uh, lovely to meet everyone. Thank you very much for coming. Um, I'm just going to share my screen. Uh, so should be okay yeah everyone can everyone see that a few nods yeah, yeah thank you thank you so thank you for the introductions um i think uh everybody that uh uh this is a interactive workshop so feel free to uh, keep the cameras on keep your microphone on feel free to uh butt in raise your hand however you want to want to do it i'm quite happy um, for people to interrupt me with anecdotes or, or whatever it might be. I'll also pause if I remember to pause um, occasionally. Um, so most of you looking at looking at the, the sheet I got um, from the guys um, wanted to learn about emotional intelligence for your self-development, for your teams, for your organisations. So um, there was a whole host in there. Um, many people, I think, are from the HR community um leadership learning and development um, but there's also um some business leaders that signed up as well so we've got a real mix which is great um and the, the sort of questions that people wanted to know the answers to were you know from what is emotional intelligence how can we develop leaders what's the benefits um so you should get a taste of all of that um in this session and not to forget um thank you for those of you that that did do your assessment I've sent you a little snapshot um, and when we meet one-to-one -one, I can provide you with the whole report and I can coach you through what that means. 
if you haven't done it, it's it's you've not run out of time. You've still got a bit of time. You can you can get that done, and we'll arrange those um, those reports to come to you as well. So. I'm going to start off by throwing a question out there and it's quite should be quite an easy one. What mood are you in today or this minute or right now? Oh, definitely happy today. <laughs> <laughs> You're in the Dominican Republic, yeah. Yes. <laughs> what does what does the one in the bottom, what does the one in the bottom right mean? That's what I wondered. <laughs> Uh, I'm happy. Like? I'm happy and jealous that I'm not in the Dominican Republic. I'm happy and jealous. Yep. Yeah. I'm happy and tired because the twelve-year-old was up multiple times last night. Ooh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh. I'm I'm with Kirsten on that one. I've got a, a two and a half year old that was uh, that must have been psychically aligned. Um, so a bit tired, but happy nonetheless. So so sorry to have that psychic link with you, Ross, but I feel your <laughs> yeah. pain. <laughs> a lot of empathy there. So your your emotions do shape how you make decisions. So have a think about it. So you've just shared a bit of what how you know how you're feeling at the moment. How do you think your emotions can shape your food choices? <laughs> Is that has anyone got an example of how their emotions shape their food choices? Yeah, if if, if I'm tired, my sugar cravings go through the roof. I'm just mm -hmm. looking for calories and energy from anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm bored, I tend to look for something that's less boring to eat, like crunchy or mm -hmm, yeah. something that'll be active. Absolutely. And and how about how you use your spare time? Do your emotions shape that as well? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And think of some examples. How about then your decision making? So if, if it impacts things like your food choices and how you use your spare time, yeah. then your decision making. If you're stressed, if you're angry, if you're happy, if you're feeling calm and relaxed, you might make different decisions. Mm -hmm. So I, I I don't know about you, but when I go and buy, if I go and buy a car, it will depend if I like the person I'm buying it from. I'll spend a bit more sometimes and I'll walk away if I don't like them, you know. So your relationships at work as well. You might also get a red mist when you see certain people. Maybe because you're always in a hurry and they always talk really slowly or too detailed or... I got an email from one of my neighbours today. It was so long. I just printed it out and put it on the, I'll read that later pile. So, <laughs> so I was in a busy mood or I was just trying to stay calm and I just thought, I'm not ready for that yet. Mm -hmm. And then your ability to motivate your team, teams, your, your mood um, will impact that as well. Impacts everything, everything we do. And I don't think... Um, really we, we we really consider it enough in our day-to-day -day. how about the other way around uh, in fact all these uh, lines that you share they create emotions they do yeah mm -hmm. they do so all, all the interactions everything you sense everything you s smells um see hear experience they will all uh, impact emotions too you're right it's not one way it's two way mm -hmm. So Daniel Goleman, has anyone heard of Daniel Goleman? No. No, some of you. He's the guru that um, that really first catapulted emotional intelligence um, in the 1990s. I think it was probably 1995. He wrote this book, which was a number one bestseller in America for a year and a half and is now sold, you know, across the globe. Um the fact that it was written in the 1990s and still 30 years later, it's, you know, it's held up as this is the guru's book um, is uh, is amazing. He was an American psychologist. He um, he talked about behavior, emotions and the brain. 
And he was one of the first people to say, it's not just your IQ that makes you a good leader. It's your soft skills, your non-cognitive skills, your Simon Sinek would say your human skills, not your soft skills. Um, so it's it's a mixture, not just your IQ. It's not just what you know. It's how you interact with people. So he was one of the first people to actually talk like that. I'm going to talk a little bit about the brain now. I'm, I'm not a scientist, um, but the limbic system is exactly as Andre just said. It's where we hear, see, smell, taste, touch. It's all the information we experience and receive comes through our limbic system first. That's how it enters the brain before it gets to the, and that's the emotional, um, the emotional cogs, the emotional working of the brain. Um, so the messages that we receive travel through the emotional filter of our brain before it gets to the rational filter. So things like the hippocampus, which you can see down there, bottom left of the diagram, that's where your experiences, um, like the smell of bacon, um, can really trigger emotions. And it might mean that you go and have a bacon sandwich or a breakfast, or you get hungry because you can smell bacon. Um, so those, those, that information filters through the, that emotional filter on the brain. So that's worth bearing in mind that everything comes through an emotional filter. The, I think it's on, it's under the pictures. I think it's called the amyg, amygdala. I can't, I can't pronounce it. Can anyone pronounce that? Amygdala. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so that's the one that, um, where you get your, your sort of fight or flight. So mm -hmm. that's when you're stressed and something triggers and you're like, I'm getting out of here or freeze, flight, fright, fight, flight, or freeze it is now because people, they, they realize that actually it's not one or the other. Some people just freeze. So that's that, that part of the brain. So when we're talking about emotional intelligence, it's that emotional area of the brain and the rational area of the brain and those neuro pathways that link the two. And the stronger those neural pathways are, the more effective is that decision making. So that's the area that we want to develop. So you might have heard when people talk about the brain and different pathways, um, when you when you practice, I don't know if you practice a sport like tennis or golf, you keep doing the same thing again and again. You keep practicing, you get better because your brain becomes um, more proficient and those pathways get bigger. It's exactly the same with emotional intelligence. Um, one of one of my uh, one of my clients, um, one of my early clients, uh, had a really low empathy <laughs> in his uh, in his assessment that I did, and he was just uh, he said to me, "I'm from the north of England. I live in Amsterdam. Sorry, Andre." And uh, he said, "I am." straightforward I am you know that's who I am I'm not going to change he was like in his 50s not that there's anything wrong with being in your 50s um, so he he then uh, you know so then I ex explained all this to him and he was a bit skeptical um, about how he could develop em empathy at the age of 55 um, but we worked on it and he uh, he took away some homework after that first session he came back to me afterwards and said oh my goodness that that works Somebody, you know, he's learning things. He's learning things he might not have learned before about during a conversation he was having with somebody whilst he was being more empathetic. Mm -hmm. So it's about practice. There's been there's been a lot of research about what does that mean for businesses, and also you know for the individuals as well. So Cap Gem and I did did some research back in 2019. Some of the benefits there on that you can see on the left hand side to the individual's performance, they've got, um, they're finding that people are more productive, more efficient because there's, there's less conflict. 
things are smoother, people are people are working, people are motivated, got higher employee satisfaction around themselves and around their boss and around their team and around the way everyone's working and therefore much lower attrition. And from a business perspective, they have more, they have improved client service, which then gives them an increase in the market share, better cost savings and an increase in revenue. So it's it's a win-win. Mm -hmm. The people feel better, the teams feel better and the business does better. This is what I call the leadership equation. This is going back to um, what I was just saying about Daniel Goleman. So leadership performance and that leadership maximizing the leadership potential. IQ is you know, intelligence. TQ, that's their technical skills. So intelligence and technical skills used to be you know, the, the mainstay of, of a leader and then people get promoted. But if you multiply that by an emotional intelligence, then you skyrocket their performance. Martin Newman is the uh, chairman of Roche Martin. He's a uh, Australian psychologist um, and he, my assessments and my work is all done using uh, Roche Martin's uh, assessments because I I used them when I was working in the corporate world as well as now that I'm a coach and he says that you know today we're competing on the basis of time and talent and it's how you attract retain and motivate your people how you treat your customers and that's how well your company is led so that really really makes a huge difference in business and that's why he developed these assessments 20 years ago So people are critical to business performance. We're talking about enhancing emotional intelligence. The big question is, how do we do that? Um, the studies from Roche Martin found that there are 10 key competencies that form the basis of emotional intelligence. And you'll have seen that on your summary that I sent each of you. But don't worry, I'm not going to share your summaries. Um, that's confidential. Um, we will talk about it in in our one to one coaching. I won't share it here. You feel free to share anything that you that you um, that you see there, but um, I'm not going to force anyone to share it. I'm certainly not going to pop up on the screen. Um, so the the first thing that we do once we know that there's those ten competencies, there's there's all the questions that you have answered in the assessment, and then we can measure measure where somebody where somebody sits on that on that level i'm going to go into i hope it's the next slide so it's called the emotional capital report so these are the 10 key competencies there's self-knowing self-control self-confidence self-reliance these will all be on the that one pager that you've seen if i go into it I know this this is small, but this is um, a key. We're gonna we're gonna sit on this slide for a little bit. Um, these are the ten key compet competencies, and some of them are obvious. I'll talk about the 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 inner, other, and outer that you can see on the left in a minute. But let's let's um, open the floor to you guys for a bit. What what do you what would you say, self knowing? I imagine there's a, a group of uh, HR prof professionals, you'll be quite good at some of these. So self-knowing, what would you say that that means? Self-awareness. Yeah, yeah. And with with particularly about self-awareness and how you how your emotions impact other people and, and your emotions and your and your decisions, as we've just been talking about. How about self-control? Yeah, that would be, you know, patience, um, you know, ability to maintain composure. Absolutely. Yeah. I before I did any work on my emotional intelligence, um, my HR business partner came to me. I was a director at the time, I think, or nearly, and he said, Sarah, did you realize that your mood 
um, permeates the department. And I just, I just thought I was not aware. And I was, what, my mood, it's my, yeah, it's my mood. It's not anybody else's mood. And he was like, angry, happy, stressed, having fun. He said, it, it's just, it permeates the whole department. Um, and then I became aware. So I had no self-control when I was angry, everybody knew. When I was happy, everybody knew. Um, it, it, that was a real sort of a bit of a um, realisation for me. Uh, Self-confidence. How comfortable in your own shoes of who you are, what you're able to do, what you're not able to do. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And self-reliance? This is used less in terms of sort of general conversation, but it's about um, people being able to make their own decisions. So you're relying on your own knowledge, understanding and your own confidence. Um, so you can plan and make those decisions yourself without constantly referring to somebody else. So those those four, that, that group of four, um, is about the inner focus. It's how your own emotions, your own how you feel about yourself um, enables you to communicate with other people. So that's what those four are. We're going to go through the other, so we're going to come to some case studies in a minute, and then I'm going to ask you what you think is showing in the case study so uh so so pay attention so empathy what what do we think empathy when we hear that word yeah when you can understand where others are yeah it's having it's having that um understanding what they're feeling so it's not a they're there quite often people think confuse it with sympathy um but yeah empathy it's putting yourself in their shoes Relation, how about relationship skills? Being the able to, go ahead. Do you go for it? Oh, I was just going to say the abil ability to navigate and get along with people, right? You know, yeah, nuances. Which is a, a real skill, isn't it? A real skill. Um, straightforwardness. That's about being able to to say what you think and what you feel and deliver maybe sometimes a difficult message or sometimes an easy message but just to say it in a way that doesn't then cause offense so say mm -hmm. it in a good way that that builds that trust um those those three that little cluster there are competencies that are about it, it says other <laughs> just because it's not inner or outer but it's about um it's about other um Sorry, I've forgotten what that one is about. It's about other, it's, a, it's the business dimension. That's what it is. It's the business dimension. So empathy, relationships, being straightforward and providing that feedback to other people. It's not about yourself. It's not about other people. It's it's about the business. And then we'll look at that, that bottom cluster. So optimism. Anybody got any thoughts <clears throat> on, on what that, Looks yeah, like. always, always look at, at, at solutions and, and not so much to the problems, uh, I, I would say. That's true. That's true. You could say glass is half full. Mm -hmm. it, it's not as some people think, you're absolutely right, Andre, but it's not as some people might think, you know, I don't know if you saw Finding Nemo. There was a, there was a, uh, the blue fish, what she called Dory, just mm -hmm. keep swimming. You know, it's not sort of like, just carry on, everything will be fine regardless. It's it's probably thinking things through and thinking about the solutions in a in a positive way, flipping mm -hmm. it quite often. About I, self, you're gone, sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say for an anecdote, like my favorite quote, everybody talks about whether the glass is half full or half empty. And I don't remember where I got this, but the my favorite is people forget the glass is refillable. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that. I like there that. There you go, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna steal that. Please do. I yeah. I thought I thought the other uh, derivative of that is there's always room for more wine, but um, I may be wrong. <laughs> I like the way you think. 
Absolutely. So uh, the next one, self-actualization. That was a tough one because it's not a phrase that's used very often. It's about um, setting clear goals, knowing how to achieve, achieve them, balancing your, your work and life and being really comfortable with where you are and the things that you've achieved. And the last so that, one. Sorry, sorry, Sarah, that just to be based on your uh, what you have achieved as opposed to self-knowing. Self-knowing sounds very similar. Yes, it's, it's more around um, self-knowing is is more sort of looking internally and knowing yourself, whereas self-actualization is more about what you've achieved, what you're going progress. to achieve. Yeah, okay. it's got that, uh, <clears throat> my left, that that outer focus. So optimism is optimism about the, you know, the world. It's not just an internal optimism. And then the last one being adaptability, which is looking at being able to adapt to the world around you in changing circumstances. So I've given you a lot of information there, but I think most of it was is is known already. There might just be a couple of new sort of phrases and, and terms. So I'm going to go into case study number one. So again, I'll just say this isn't any of yours. So, um, but you can see here, it looks a bit like the summary I've sent all of you, if you've already received your summary. If you haven't, please, please do your assessment and I'll send you, send you your summary and talk through your report. So I appreciate, I've only just given you those, those 10, what they mean. But if you look at this summary page, you can see, um, based on all the questions that have been answered, this person, on the left hand side, uh, it's split into five. So on the left hand side, if there was one of the red bars in there, it would be a development need. Then it moves up to a development opportunity, the effective range in the middle, and then it's a strength to build on. And then right at the right hand side, it's a signature strength. So just on that sort of basis, what, what would you say about this person in, in case study one? What can you start to, what sort of picture can you start to build up? I think they've got a lot of self-confidence. They seem to know who they are. Um, they feel they can tackle anything um, and make changes along the way. Yeah. Yeah, the self-actualization is really high. That's a signature strength. Optimism's high, really high. What about the ones that are on the lower side of the scale? Yeah, it's, I found it interesting on mine hmm. too. The empathy was low, but relational skills, it was, it's about the same right there on my personal one, you know, somewhere it needs improvement, but then the relational skills were, were in an area that seemed to be okay. So that made me start asking questions like what's the difference between those two? Yeah. And it, and it may be people really like you, but it could be, it could be even further to the right if your empathy was higher but I mean the empathy on this person is effective range it's just not a key strength mm -hmm. but yeah this person looks quite balanced so none of the scores are in that development need or development opportunity the self-knowing and empathy and I think straightforwardness was the lowest of the effective ones and that optimism and self-actualization are strengths I'd say also have another look that both of those optimism and self-actualization they're in that out of focus so maybe this person is is outwardly quite confident and quite all together but empathy straightforwardness self-knowing just a little bit less so internally maybe it does does struggle a little bit sorry so, sarah can i just ask a quick question on, on if you wouldn't mind yeah. going back to your last slide yeah um, could 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 that be sort of maybe perceived as somewhat having a lack of confidence in certain situations, or I think so. It's difficult without having the person here to ask. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I think I think so. Um, I mean, they've they've got a lot of potential because they've got a lot of optimism and that self actualization. They know where they want to go, but lack a bit of confidence in themselves. Um, maybe haven't been in a situation where they realize that empathy is really important maybe nobody's ever talked to them or 
you know, a lot a lot of the, how we grow up is based on our you know nurture nature and the you know the people that we that we are influenced by um but again, but again, I guess it could, you know, again, confidence is not a static position, right? If they're having a fairly low day, then perhaps they're, 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 they're not as self-knowing because they're lacking in confidence because something else is, is Im impacting them, right? That's that's absolutely right. So it depends what, else, what what is going on in this person's life. You know, mm. you, you can't really see it in this one box. You can you can make some, in, you know, some hypotheses, Um but you don't really know unless unless you talk to the person and then they might say i've just been promoted or i've just been turned down for promotion or you know it could be a whole host of different scenarios playing out at this one point in time because it is just one point in time right when when they fill in the um the, the assessment so if somebody's high in optimism and high in self actualization then they will be able to um, be super positive about their ability, what they're going to achieve in their life. They might be over positive, um, but they will be very satisfied with where they're at and where they're going. So case study two, I've only got three. Anyway, case study two. What do you think about this person? What can you <clears> say about <throat> this person? Well, to, to use your earlier example of the you know gentleman in his fifties that probably lacked empathy, it, from this it looks a little bit like to me like they could be somewhat set in their ways on certain points. Would that yeah. be? I mm -hmm. think it does. Yeah, I mean this isn't his, but it could be, couldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> But it also seems like they're a go-getter. Um, you know, they've got some really strong qualities about moving things forward, um, but yet they may suffer on the connecting with people side of it. Yeah, yeah. And there's quite a lot that's in in sort of t towards the right hand side, especially quite a lot in their in their inner focus. So they're, themselves, they they'll be quite happy with themselves, but it's that other focus and the outer focus, apart from optimism, that's that's slightly lower, not that low, you know, it's, which, it's all relative, isn't it? So, um, but yeah, empathy's low, straightforwardness is high. So that is like the uh, the guy I, I was coaching before, um, you know, yeah, absolutely will hear exactly how he, how he feels about you. Self-control in the middle, um, not a lot of asking what you think, but relationship skills, you know, people like this person. Mm -hmm. Well, he thinks they do, right? Because it's a self. <laughs> you're true. That's true. He thinks they do, or he yeah. or she <laughs> thinks they do. You're right. You're right. Because this this assessment that that we're doing here, or that we 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 will be doing when I speak to you all individually, is based on what you think. There is another assessment, which is a 360 version, that then will plot what you think, and what your raters that you've asked to rate you think. And, you, and that that can be in lots of different categories. There's a category for your boss, which is clearly just one person, um, but also it could be your team, a different category. Your peers is another category and your stakeholders. So sometimes you see that um, maybe your team or your boss thinks the same as you. Stakeholders feel completely differently. Or, you know, so you, you get a really great view of somebody's blind spot by looking at that 360. But you're right, this one is is just what they think. So here, this is my thing. Empathy was was identified as a as a development opportunity. Adaptability was quite low. Um straightforwardness was seen as a strength, but you know, you've got to be careful with straightforwardness being a strength if you if you're lacking in other areas. And there were this is quite a lot of green there. There were quite a lot in the strengths to build on sort of section. And it's also throughout the inner, the other, and the outer. So it's a good mixture. <clears throat> when I when I see something like straightforward as skew so far, like almost to the max, like it reminds me, I, I work on a lot of global projects and, and things with lots of um uh, 
different cultures. And there's um, quite a few cultures where they, that straightforward, that like, you know, almost sometimes brutal delivery of the truth is seen as like, you know, part of the, the culture, but also something people are very proud of. Um, the other side of that though, is I think sometimes people take it as, well, I'm just speaking, you know, I'm just speaking the truth. I'm just, you know, I'm just being, you know, transparent. And you're like, well, there's a fine line between truth and, um, you know, uh, inability to get along with others, you know, or something, you know, where, um, it's just that it's, it's a bit too brutal to be easily accepted. Absolutely. Do you see that at all? Or, um, just yeah, curious. Definitely. And it can depend on the company culture. Um, I mean, I came from a, a company culture where, you know, being brave, being straight up, being straightforward was that, you know, that's exactly what you should be doing. So, um, you know, could be that this case study was from that company. So we've we've looked at if your straightforwardness is high and your empathy was low. What if we switched the two? What if there was a situation where the empathy was high and the straightforwardness was was low? What do you think might be happening there? Um, they're too worried about every well, how other people are feeling and probably not getting delivering the message. Um, because they're worried about how how it's going to be delivered, what people are going. They're putting more of em em emphasis on the empathy piece rather than delivering the message. Yeah, they're probably really, really strong, really strong um, people thinkers. You know, um, thinking about people, thinking about feelings. They can put themselves in that person's position, put themselves in their shoes so much that it almost stifles their being able to deliver a, a message so mm -hmm. yeah these two are quite often sort of if, if you see one high you'll see the other one low quite often it's very difficult to have them both uh ba well balanced so it, i think most of you have got your reports so have a th you might have been doing it already while while we were talking but have a look at yours um what does your what does yours look like based on have you know we've talked about those other case studies feel free to, feel free to share some some self observations if if you want you don't have to yeah, i think mine was closest to um the the one the first one that you shared um mm -hmm. you know the empathy being lower than relational skills straightforwardness so um you know and then there, uh, what was it? Uh, self-control. Oh my goodness. I have lack of patience. Like you would not believe. So self-control <laughs> was, was spot on. Um, so yeah, I thought it was a very true, uh, I don't know, visual of, of what my strengths are and weaknesses. Yeah. So it was good. Thank you, Thank you for sharing. Th there's no right or wrong. Um, yeah. but, but by, by having some information, then you know which areas you you want to or can start to develop, and you can sort of prioritize, and you can see maybe why you, you might have been struggling in some areas. <clears throat> Mine was very low on the um so um straightforwardness, like it's, you could hardly see the red, <laughs> massive uh, um area to thing. But my empathy was really high, and I know that about myself uh, in the role that I do, as I'm constantly thinking, how is this message going to land, you know, mm -hmm. and thinking, you know, I, I suppose the layered effect, you know, what people are going through, not just yeah. the initial message and the comms, uh, everything surrounding it. Um, so that was quite um, insightful. But and and exactly so that that's showing that balance between the empathy and this and the straightforwardness, but also it's showing that it's the context of the organisation and where your organisation might be at the moment. If you're having to deliver messages that people might not receive very well, then then um, that will be even harder, even harder in that situation. Yeah, I echo Emma. Um, I my summary is very similar. So I surprised I was surprised when I read that so low score for the straightforwardness. But I think that's really true. And um, besides, there's a cultural behind because in Asian there's a a lot of time that you have team oriented uh, feelings. You don't have individualism. So you most time that consider others. So empathy is like mm -hmm. all in your blood. So um, 
very difficult to deliver hard uh, or difficult messages and very difficult to say no. So that is really true that uh, I totally agree. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you for sharing, everyone. Um, I'm, I'm going to talk about a couple of the of the competencies. So we've talked a little bit about empathy there. The three main areas when when you're talking about developing empathy and yeah, bearing in mind if uh, if somebody was low on empathy and we were having a one to one conversation, I'd really dig into to why um, and I would listen. But the, the three key areas that that you would use to develop empathy is listening. So there's lots of different levels of listening. I, you know, you can Google it. Some will say there's four, some will say there's five, some will say there's six. But the, the top one is always listening with empathy. So that's where you listen, you truly hear, you switch off your own brain in the background. You're curious about what they're saying and you're putting yourself in their shoes. That's a, that's a real thing that um, some people do naturally and some people really have to practice. Um, and, and with any of these things, quite often I say to my clients, um, practice with your friends or your children. And, and you can really see them change um, in terms of how they how they deal with you, um, but also practice at work. Um, curiosity is that, you know, having a real proper curiosity about why they think how they think. It's not really about what, it's about why and how. And connecting. So what haven't they said? Are they feeling happy, sad, worried, stressed? They, it's harder when you're on a um, when you're on a screen much easier in person. So this is why emotional intelligence is actually more important these days when there's a lot more working from home. So yeah, a genuine interest in understanding more, thinking about it from their context and their perspective and sensing <clears throat> their thoughts and feelings. So there's uh, Martin again. So he says, it's not about being warm and fuzzy. Sometimes people think empathy is just about, you know, saying they're there, you know, but it is the emotional glue that really creates that personal interconnection. If you think about it as the glue that, that creates that personal interconnection, then you can really see it working and really establishes trust and loyalty. Straightforwardness is another one that we've just been talking about. So the three areas I, I would focus on is assertiveness, acknowledging others, and having some self-control. So the assertiveness is not about being, you know, bullshit, but it's about what do you want and knowing why it's important, why it's important to the business, the taking the, the personal feelings and emotions out of it. Recognizing and understanding that somebody else might have a different viewpoint and listening and being curious. And then always staying rational and calm Sometimes straight and forwardness is low is when people are anxious about what somebody else might say, might do. So be aware of your own anxiety and how that might exhibit when you're talking to somebody. And you know, Martin says, when negative emotions get the better of us, we operate in one of two mode modes. We either default to the other people because we're worrying about their judgment of us or we try to dominate to regain control. So it's about making sure and having that balance. <clears throat> now, this is our last case study. That's what we're doing for time. We're okay on time. So this is our last case study. What does What do people think about this person? What can we what can we infer? What can we hypothesize? Well rounded into well well rounded yeah. individual. That's I think so. Yeah, really definitely good. well rounded. They've definitely scored themselves, as you'd say, you know, quite high on, on a lot of these EQ competencies. Maybe somebody that's been doing some development. Five of the 10 competencies were in that strength to build on or, you know, signature strength. There's a broad range within the inner, the 
outer and the other. So all of the different areas. None of them were in a development opp opportunity or a development edit needed. Empathy was the lowest, but you know, it's right <clears> slap bang <throat> in the middle of the uh, of the effective range. I'd say it looks like someone's been working on their emotional intelligence with this one. Sarah, sorry, just a question on that. And um, so would they, that someone like that, that would be someone as you, what you'd want as, um, yeah, I suppose your uh, sort of leader that you would be looking for that, you know, the ones that get really great results on, you know, your say, uh, you know, sort of engagement surveys, you know, well, um, I suppose high performing teams, things like that, you know, that's the type of leader that would be create that environment. They would be, yeah. People would feel like they they could trust their boss. They would, you know, they've got their they're not got any sort of ego. Um, they would be feeling comfortable and you know happy. Their engagement would be high, as you said, um, and they would be fair. Um, and people would um, know where they stood. So there would be none of this. You know, I don't know which person I'm going to get from day to day. Um, they're really good with their relationships. They'll probably be open and transparent with their team. So yeah, and you know, if if this isn't where you are, this is where you would aim to be. Sort of, you know, you can't, you don't want a signature signature strength on everything. So yeah, my next question was going to be, what might all of these case studies have in common? There is something that they all have in common. It's not easy to guess. Empathy is fairly low compared to the other scores on all of them. But they're all mine. Oh, okay. So they're all mine. So case study one was me in 2012. So I, I uh, when I was a leader at, at Virgin Media and Liberty Global, um, we did some emotional intelligence assessments and, and coaching. So I'd been head of department for a while. I really wanted to, for a long while, actually. <laughs> for a long long while I really wanted to be a director we were going through a huge round of redundancies um I wasn't aware of my own emotions at all and how they impacted and how how they can be developed so I was completely yeah green 2014 so it's only two years later I'd become aware and done a bit of coaching and if you remember my self-confidence then was was high but some of the others got left behind so I, I it was 10 years ago, but, you know, I think I was working on those self ones and the other ones just stagnated or went backwards a little bit. So what was happening for me there? I, I had been promoted to director and then to vice president sort of within the space of two years at Liberty Global. Um, so there was a lot, a lot going on. I was in a different part of the company, sort of the parent part of the company, which had a, a, an incredibly different culture. And then case study three, that's me two years ago. So I took redundancy from my uh, my high pressure job in 2020, started my own business in 21, trained in emotional intelligence coaching, which was when they did another another assessment for me. Um, but I, ha hmm. I had been working on it throughout my career, really by that point for 10 years. And you can really see, you can really see the results. So thanks for not saying anything really horrible about me as we went through the case studies. No, but in fact, this is good news for the Amsterdam guy, eh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So we're, we're coming towards the end. Um, I just really want to know um, if I've answered all your questions that you had before you came or, or and sort of um, have I explained what emotional intelligence is? Have I sort of piqued your interest and enabled you to look a little bit into how it can be used to develop leaders? I think it's it's good. It's a refreshing um, because that concept has been around for years that it matters, you know, in the workplace. So to to see that it still matters, um, especially in today's world of IT and AI, and you know, it still matters to have an emotional. Um, depository, uh, what that you can, you know, use in your work skill set. So it was good to hear that. Good. Any any other questions that um that are sort of coming to mind from anyone that I had a question actually, Sarah. Um so you know coming from the recruitment 
background myself i'm curious like from your point of view because i've come across some similar reports before this uh, this one by roche martin and others and there's always been a lot of debate about how you use it either on the recruitment side or through development um and making sure that the people actually looking and reviewing the content of the reports are in a in a position to accurately read the data and then guide on what a good decision looked like so i'm just curious um it's something i've come up against well but i'm just curious about your own experience on that particular topic where someone you know gets a report and has to use this to assist their hiring decision and and the ways in which it's been done before in your experience and you know positively so so i i my own experience is that <clears throat> that one from 2012 of mine um that was used when I wanted to be, uh, when I was looking to be a promoted to director. Um, I, it wasn't used very sensitively. I walked into the interview room. There were three people there, my boss, my, you know, and my future boss and the HR business partner. And immediately my boss said, why is your self-confidence so low? I hadn't seen the report. I didn't know what he was talking about. And I didn't think my self-confidence was low. So it was it really disarmed me. Um I don't think that's what he meant to do. Um, L- lack of self-awareness on his part, right? No, and, yes. and if it was low, you know, it's gonna be even lower now, right? <laughs> <laughs> so um so I think if you are gonna use it, you have to be really careful. Um but I I also saw it wasn't emotional intelligence, it was um I think it was insights or disc i was coaching somebody and they said oh i've got you know w- uh, one of those reports uh, and i said i'll oh, send it to me um just before we start coaching it'll give me a bit of an insight um and and he's his assessment was just he was he was bland he was n- neither you know peter or paul he was nothing he was not had no opinions he was like really flat and i hadn't known that it was used in a in, in an interview situation um, so I asked him and he said, yes. And I said, were you being super careful on how you answered it? Because you didn't know what what good looked like. And he was like, yeah, he didn't work for the company. It was a company. Yeah, he was an outside hire. And he just tried to be all things to all people and, and came out. I mean, they employed him, but his report was useless, really, because he, he was just trying to be what they wanted him to be. Mm. He didn't want to get anything. What, so one, of things I, one, one of the things I learned um back then was that uh so a little while ago now since i was doing it on the ground on the recruitment (laughs) side with the reports but the um it basically depended on the quality of the person reading the report in terms of their knowledge like in terms of whether they were certified they had the knowledge of doing it and those kind of things because i i witnessed i won't say where but i witnessed a, a few um a few times where you know quite junior people were delivering some of the information back with managers making hiring decisions and those kind of things obviously it can just get misconstrued if they're not if they're not trained up in it so I was just curious on your own experience yeah. with it really, that was all yeah I think I think you've got to be really careful I think it's probably a really good thing to do once you've chosen the person and recruited them then do it and then it's about right you're you're now part of the team we've already we were, we've all signed up you know we've all got the the contracts and you're in the team then it's then it's let's do this and let's just help support you to be the best person that you can be. It's not about trying to find where people's problems are. It's just about how to support you be the best person you can be. Yeah. That's what I would do. Any other questions? I'm curious, because um, I've had to do uh, and have helped others do, you know, in, in teams a lot, different assessments, you know, animals at work and disc and like, I mean, you know, um, Myers-Briggs and, and all sorts of things. And the part that I always think is most interesting and helpful in a business context, um, depending on the assessment, if it's available, is the like, and how do you work with people that are different to you? Or what does this tell you about other people on the team? And like the the additional insight, not just into yourself, but into whoever you're working with or, or whatever the, the scenario is. Does um do any of the EQ assessments have something like that with with some of the the broader team context or is it mostly individual? Um, well, there is a teams um there is a team EQ assessment that Roche Martin brought out last year, um and and it will a similar sort of uh, assessment questionnaire, but. It
but it it will come out and and say you know how what the team efficacy is what the team um level of trust i forget what the word is but there's a you know level of trust i can't think of the word but it, it it's it's got a number of different teams i can if you're interested i can send you all this i've got a sample report um sure. That I can send you on that, and I can also send you the um, 360 sample as well. So then you can see how that that would look, um, because then it's more rounded on the individual. But yeah, you can definitely have a, a team version. Psychological safety—that's the word I was trying to find. I, I was on the website just so while we while we were talking about <laughs> some of the things. Yeah, I don't know if I don't know if the teams one is on that. I didn't see that, so that'd be really great. But I, I did like the 360. Yeah. Yeah, they only just brought it out and they, um, they've only let a few coaches have access to it at the moment. Yeah, just thank you all very much for your time. Thank you, Sarah, for, for presenting that content. Um, it, was, it was terrific, very informative as well. It's my own background is, is in sales and a lot of this stuff resonates quite a bit. And some of those uh, characteristics resonate as well. So we appreciate it. Um, yeah, just just to the audience as well. Before you go, you know, um, we're always keen on feedback, so we'd be delighted to kind of reach out to you one to one as well, and just make sure that that, that we're kind of providing the content, um, that you guys want to want to hear and, and find useful, and it's going to help you in your day to day, um, activities. So with that, thank you very much, and we will, yeah, we'll hopefully speak to you soon.